Hi, my name is Alexis Tedder, and I'm doing the chemistry of sweet tea. So, we'll start with the composition. Just to make green tea, you take 22 carbon atoms, 18 hydrogen atoms, 11 oxygen atoms, plus granulated sugar, which is 12 carbon atoms, 22 hydrogen atoms, and 11 oxygen atoms. That will get you this amazing drink called sweet tea. Now, let's talk about the history. 2737 BC, a Chinese emperor, Shenon, accidentally drank some boiled water that a dead tea leaf slipped into and was found, and tea was found. Until the 14th century, only people of high authority could even afford to purchase tea. The drink was not even introduced to Eastern Asia until the 16th century from traders coming from East Asia. Tea then traveled to Britain and is now considered the national drink, although they prefer black teas. When Britain colonized America, they brought tea with them, and it has stayed ever since. Now, on to the sugar's history. Sugar had a little bit different of a start to its beginning. It is believed sugar was found thousands of years ago in New Guinea, then spread through Southeast Asia and India. Around 500 BC in India, the process of making granulated sugar began. This cultivation did not reach Europe until the Middle Ages through Spain with the Arabs. Columbus then took the plants to the Indies with him, where it grew abundantly. abundantly. Sugar did not reach America until the 18th century. It began in New Orleans and stretched out from there, and it is now used all over America. Now, let's talk about the chemistry part of sweet tea. Tea. Green tea and granulated sugar are both naturally occurring, but it takes a few steps to get to the final products. Tea leaves first must be dried out to add to the hot water to make strong, flavorful tea. First, bring a kettle of water, H2O, to a boil. Next, preheat the container that you will have your tea in. This keeps the temperature of the water from lowering. After you pour the water in the container, drop your tea leaves either in a strainer or just directly into the bottom of the container. Let the tea steep, saturate flavor into water, which is what it means, for about 5 to 10 minutes. If you have not strained the tea leaves to begin with, place a strainer over your cup and pour the tea in. If you have strained it already, just pour into the cup. Lastly, just add honey, lemon, sugar, or whatever else you want to put into your cup of tea and drink up. Now, let's talk about sugar. To get granulated sugar, it takes a few more steps. To, it starts with sugar cane in a sugar cane field being lit on fire to remove the leaves from the stalks. After all of the leaves are gone, the stalks are removed from the field and taken to the refinery. In the refinery, the stalks are chopped, shredded, rolled under a crushing machine. By crushing the canes, it is removed. It removes the juices, which currently contain which currently contain sugarcane juice, dirt, and cane pulp. Calcium hydroxide is then added to the juice while carbon dioxide is bubbled through the, this mixture to create insoluble calcium compounds. The calcium hydroxide also raises the pH levels in the juices. Polyacrylamides help remove cane pulp, dirt, and other impurities that are not wanted in the sugar juice. Once the juice is clean of impurities, it is ran through an activated carbon filter to remove the water. The juice is sent through an evaporator and the juice is thickened. Seed crystals are then added to the thick juice to help, the, to help form sugar crystals. Once the crystals are formed, the juice needs to, be, to still be removed from them using a centrifuge. Mother juice is left behind in the crystallization process. The juice will later become molasses. The dry crystals are left is raw sugar, which is now ready to be formed into white sugar. I love having raw sugar put into my tea, so that's where the sugar refining process ends for myself. 
and that's all I got for you. Thanks.